Stroke Awareness Oregon is a group that continues to grow, not only here in Central Oregon, but across the nation. And joining us, Executive Director Carol Stiles and Board President Jim Patterson to share more about the organization and a very special event with country star Randy Travis coming up in May in Bend. Thanks to both of you for joining us. And Carol, let's start with you. A quick overview of Stroke Awareness Oregon and how it all began. This organization came together in the very early parts of 2018, and it was founded by a local neurologist, Dr. Steve Goins, and a businesswoman who had experienced a stroke, Lonnae Hunter. And they got their heads together, and two things were very obvious. First, people who are experiencing stroke were not getting to the hospital early enough to receive the life-saving treatments that are now available. The second thing that was very obvious is that the supports and understanding about stroke and people who survive stroke were just not present. That's how Stroke Awareness Oregon came to be, and those are the two lanes that we stay in in order to prevent stroke and support those who've had stroke. You mentioned the name is Stroke Awareness Oregon, so not necessarily just Central Oregon, covers the entire state, huh? Well, yes. At this point, because we are still fairly new, um, we are primarily Central Oregon, but believe it or not, Bill, we in fact had a contact from a lady over in Eugene to ask us to come and talk to their group about stroke. And so our board president is actually going to schedule that, and he will be giving our Stroke 101 presentation. So we are getting interest from all over the state. And interestingly enough, our online support groups, we have members from all over the country who join in because they need that camaraderie. They need that ability to share with people who understand. One of the horrors of suffering a stroke is the depression. Um, Some people become suicidal. The loss of hope that comes along with the recovery. And that affects not only the stroke warrior, as we call them, but also the family. Well, here's a basic question for you, Carol. What causes a stroke? There are two kinds of stroke. One is called an ischemic stroke, and that's a clot that lodges somewhere in the brain. The other is a hemorrhagic. The majority of strokes are ischemic, and there are a number of causes. High blood pressure is at the top of the list, high cholesterol, diabetes, sleep apnea, AFib is a big one, obesity. And here's the interesting thing. The public tends to think that strokes are a a factor in aging, and that is true. Over 50% of strokes happen to people 65 or over. But in fact, anybody at any age, any race, any gender can have a stroke. I spoke with a young woman a couple of weeks ago. She came up to me. She had an obvious speech issue, and she had a stroke in utero before she was born. Yeah, I know in my experience, my father had a stroke later in his life, and um, his speech was gone. His brain was still there. He was trying to say things, but I suppose there are different degrees of, of having a stroke. That is absolutely true, because it depends on where the stroke happens in the brain, the location. So apparently your father's stroke happened in or around the area that's the speech center. So... The stroke will affect the potential disability. Here's the thing. For every one minute that the brain is without oxygen and nutrition, four million brain cells die. I don't know about you, but I can't afford that at this point in the game. Stroke is the fourth leading cause of death in Oregon. It's the third leading cause of death in women nationwide. And one in five people will have a stroke in a lifetime. So if you're in a room with 20 people, four of them are going to have a stroke potentially. It's also the number one cause of disability in the world. 
As you say, Carol, it sounds so common that this is taking place, and it can happen to anyone, including a country music legend like Randy Travis, who uh, is coming to band here in May. How did this all come to be, where Randy Travis is coming to talk about stroke awareness? I'm going to let our board president talk about that because it was his idea, and he made it happen. All right. Well, Board President Jim Patterson, welcome to the show, and give us a little background about uh, your involvement and how you were able to to bring in Randy Travis to Bend. Well, first, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to expand our reach through the use of radio to help send our message of hope and inspiration to folks who may have experienced a stroke. One of the things that... uh, I did. I'm a stroke survivor. I I had a near-fatal stroke in uh, July of 2020. I became involved with Stroke Awareness Oregon as a part of my recovery and rehabilitation because one of the things that is vitally important as a part of recovery for stroke warriors, we like to call them, is being able to find their sense of purpose in life. Because stroke, if you let it, will rob you of everything. Stroke is a brain attack, and it it really screws up your brain chemistry. In addition to the fact that it can paralyze you either permanently or temporarily, or like your father experienced, aphasia, uh, speech difficulty can be a significant disability from stroke. Speaking of aphasia, Randy Travis is a, he's a recent inductee into the Country Music Hall of Fame, and clearly he made his living on writing and singing songs that made him one of the biggest country music artists in the world. Randy, as a part of the stroke he suffered in 2013, He was impacted by aphasia, the inability to speak. You and I both know if you are a singer, speaking is a big part of what you need to be able to do. And Randy lost the ability to communicate as a result of his stroke. He also remains to this day uh, unable to walk without the assistance of a wheelchair or some sort of walking stick. So his stroke was near fatal. It it almost got him. Uh, But the one thing that he had in his life, which I can attest to, is the most important. He had an amazing support system. His wife, Mary, uh, has been an amazing Uh, advocate for his recovery, and uh, my research and really trying to understand how stroke had impacted someone of such high uh, visibility uh, was something that I knew if we could get Randy to come and share his story with people in Central Oregon, that he he and his wife Mary could provide hope and inspiration to people who need it as a result of their recovery. So, you know, Carol and I have talked about this many times. If you want to make a splash, you've got to have the courage to jump in the pool. And I love Randy Travis music, Forever and Ever Amen is my favorite song he does. And I I just had an audacious idea and shared at one of our board meetings that I was going to reach out to Randy Travis. I was going to track him down and ask if he'd come to Bend, Oregon, and speak about his stroke experience. And so I I did what a lot of people do these days. I got online, and I started to look at Google, and I I tracked him down. And uh, I got a hold of his management company, And as a result of our communication and sharing the the work that we do at Stroke Awareness Oregon, there was clearly 
uh, an alignment of values and mission and purpose that resonated with Randy and his wife, Mary. Randy also has the Randy Travis Foundation, and his foundation really is about the value of music as a way of therapy in people's recovery from traumatic brain injury, which is exactly what a stroke is. It's a traumatic brain injury. It's on the same level as a severe concussion, which we know occurs a lot in Central Oregon with all of the outdoor activities and skiing and contact sports. It's on the same level as Parkinson's and the onset of dementia. It is a traumatic brain injury. We've run into uh, veterans here in Central Oregon who as a result of their military service have PTSD. Again, traumatic brain injury. Stroke Awareness Oregon, the reason we exist is to spread the word about stroke prevention, but also, so on the front end, we're trying to save lives. And on the back end, during people's recovery, we're trying to save lives as well with our support network. So as Carol mentioned, we have we host support meetings on Zoom. One of the one of the real positive things in my opinion that came out as a result of COVID, people started using technology to meet. On any given second Tuesday of the month, we may have twenty to thirty people join us from all across the United States to uh engage in one of our support groups. And it's a wide variety of people from Central Oregon, from Portland. We've got folks from North Carolina, New York, Hawaii, who join these groups. And it's because there really is no formal network of support for stroke survivors. And if, if I can tell you anything about people who've had a stroke, they're the most tenacious, persistent, and many times positive people you will ever meet. And one of the things that they are, and they're voracious learners, they want, they want so badly to know how and what they need to do to pursue that quality of life that they're looking for after a stroke. You're listening to Jim Patterson, board president of Stroke Awareness Oregon, along with Carol Stiles, the executive director. And Carol, how many different types of groups or, or who all is involved in Stroke Awareness Oregon? We have different kinds of support groups. We have a, a general support group for people who have had stroke. We are beginning an in-person support group because of the social isolation that can occur that will start in April. We have a caregiver support group for the family members who wind up having their lives changed as well and are in caregiving role. And then we have a men's support group. And we have and one other thing. We do have a young person's stroke support group. And let me tell you why. The data uh, nationally is indicating that young adults between the ages of 18 and 45 are having an alarming increase in strokes. So one of our um, young people who um, engaged with us has had a stroke, and she said, "We, I need a support group for my own age group. And that's a very popular group, by the way. As Jim mentioned, Randy Travis's stroke was more than 10 years ago, but he has really stuck with it, with the therapy, and that's really a message for all. Huh? You're absolutely right, Bill. One of the things that stroke survivors and their families learn is that rehabilitation, therapy, those things that are available uh, for recovery, sometimes it takes a long time. And as Jim said, it takes a lot of tenacity to keep plugging along. Bill, I would just add that uh, I know in my own personal experience, the rehabilitation and the recovery as a part of my physical therapy was the hardest 
physical and mental work I've ever done in my life. And I was an athlete. So I know what it's like to work hard and see the reward from your effort. I, I want to I put in a plug here for the importance in physical therapy of finding physical therapists who specialize in neurophysical therapy. Because again, stroke is a brain attack. And one of the things as a part of recovery that happens through something called neuroplasticity. It's the brain's amazing ability to rewire and reconnect the information superhighway so that in my case, when I had my stroke, my entire left side was paralyzed. I lost all use of my left arm and my left leg. I, did, I wasn't able to walk. And within about a month, as a result of work with my physical therapist, I was able to walk again. I regained dexterity in my fingers. I was able to learn how to type again. A lot of things that I was impacted by, both physically and cognitively, slowly started to come back the harder I worked on it. So I just really think it's important that for your listeners who may be dealing with stroke and the recovery from stroke. Unfortunately, some people may have been told, you know, after about a month or two, it's as good as it's going to get. And that is not true. The brain continues to rewire and reconnect for years after a stroke. The key ingredient is continue to work at it. And that's where Stroke Awareness Oregon and these support groups can help provide the gentle nudge and motivation to people who really need a kick in the butt to, to move forward and get past the hopelessness. Because I know so many people, and Randy Travis is a living example of someone who has bounced back from stroke. He's, not, he's still not at the point where he's able to do concerts, full sets of concerts because of the physical uh, energy that it takes and the stamina. But he's to the point now where he can walk and he can talk at a number of his appearances, including at the uh, Grand Ole Opry. He has broken out in song and sang forever and ever amen and amazing grace and shocked people because you know, once you find out Randy Travis had a stroke, you know, a lot of people are stereotyped. Oh, he must be a vegetable. That must be the end. You, you probably won't hear from him again. Well, he's busting down all those stereotypes, and we're really excited mm -hmm. and honored that he's, he and his wife are going to be here in Central Oregon to share their experience. Thanks for those comments, Jim. And if somebody wanted to come to this Randy Travis event scheduled in May, uh, give us the details. You bet. We are doing an evening with Randy and Mary Travis at the West Side Church on May 13th. The doors will open at 6 o'clock. The performances begin at 7. And I must say that Hayden Holmes is the presenting sponsor for this event, and have they are just absolutely champions in that they really want the community to understand uh, the importance of what Stroke Awareness Oregon is doing in the community. Tickets will be, general admission tickets will be $40. There will be premium seating at $100. And then of course, we will have our sponsor seating. The event will include an opening act by a rock and roll group called Soul Benders, led by a gentleman named Steve Boatwright. Steve has played and toured with groups like Santana, Stevie Nicks, Jimi Hendrix. So he is, he's got the creds. We will also be featuring the work that we do. We will have the fireside chat with Mr. and Mrs. Travis. And the piece de resistance is that Breedlove Guitars 
is donating a guitar to us, which Randy and his wife will autograph, and we will auction that one in a million item at the end of the event. Tickets begin April 1st, and where can we purchase tickets, Carol? Tickets may be purchased through our website, which is strokeawarenessoregon.org. And if people would like to be a part of this from the standpoint of being a sponsor, you can just give us a call at 541-323-5641. We also are looking for volunteers to help make this a fabulous event. I got to tell you, Bill, we are really excited about this. This is very novel for Central Oregon. The message that this entire evening holds is hope and moving forward and grace. Our thanks to Carol Stiles, Executive Director of Stroke Awareness Oregon, and Jim Patterson, the board president here on Inside Central Oregon.